This is an alligator. So, and this is a very large alligator. I see the like coarseness of the hide or the skin or whatever it's called. And then I don't, first I see just the belly and the coarseness and then like the movement, it's like sway side to side. And then I zoom out to see, um, first I thought it's crocodile, but they correct me that it's an alligator. And I can't help but look at all of the teeth. Very intimidating. And these really intense eyes. And again, I feel that invocation of a primordial fear in me, which I think came up last time. I don't know if it was with Coyote, but I'm noticing that that's more of like um, an intuitive experience I pick up more from the collective that's not mine necessarily that's like maybe a part of the frequency that they've inherited to invoke in others and the alligators seems to be taking time to ponder and then it wants to look around but I don't know if it has peripheral because it moves its head really quick to look on either side it turns around and and as it's turning around its gigantic tail is like knocking things over and it kind of takes in the scene here looking over the expanse of the animals out in the crowd and i can't quite tell if it's disapproving or not because there's kind of like a hmm. a grunt and I, I'm assuming that's like it's not impressed, but then it turns back around. And it's almost like people and animals have to jump not to get hit by this giant tail. And I feel like it's sizing me up. I feel like it's smelling me. And I know that there's an energy of intimidation, which I'm not sure if this is intentional or just its nature. And then I hear. I want you to know that I think you're stupid. And Princess jumps up and taps and says, that is your final warning. We will not allow any disrespects as we just stated earlier. And then it grunts again, kind of shakes its head, shakes its whole body. It's like it has to shake this off. This I'm going to explain this as like curmudgeon judgment. And it says, I'm not sure how to rephrase this. I don't take kindly to your species. I've already told you how I think about you. So I guess I don't have to repeat it. But I will let you know that from where I stand and the way I perceive this whole experience, this reality, this place that I find myself stuck in, lodged in between space and time, allocated to certain areas of the universe that I really truly think are forgotten and lost upon the greater scheme of things. I wish that your species simply didn't exist. And then there's like a... <gasps> And then Princess starts to say something again, and it and the alligator kind of like brings its arm up to quiet everyone down and like give it a moment to finish. An alligator says, This is not a personal opinion. This is definitely agreed upon belief system throughout my species. We were here before you humans. Now we know you don't remember that, but we have collected historical memory as you might call it yes we enjoyed eating you from time to time and that's all we thought you were good for your deep emotional bodies just get in the way you're too self-appointed as important you have no respect for the lands you don't understand evolution and the hierarchy of the food chain you take what you want and you leave nothing in return for others. This is a preposterous idea. 
we understand that we rule domain over our areas, which are not a vast expanse. Our territories aren't extremely wide. We respect the recyclical nature of giving and receiving. Humans, humans don't do this. They degrade everything they touch. So yes, we see no value in your existence, none at all. Our numbers have dwindled because of you. People find us to be a threat and through fear, we all know, and it turns around and acknowledges the whole crowd, that fear is the greatest excuse used to murder, mass murder, all sorts of species. But that's a part of our gift, a beauty you might call it, a rugged beauty that we inspire fear. That's important. It's a part of our protection mechanism. When you feel fear, you should run away. You don't need to kill. We don't like being in captivity. We don't want you around. We do perceive our intelligence to be much more vast than yours. And our ability to survive long predates your existence. You call us cold-blooded. We call ourselves original. So I don't have any requests from you. And I know you can sense the sickening experience in your gut right now. That's exactly how we think of you. I only wanted to impart our opinion. And yes, I understand it's an opinion, it's not fact. As many before me have just stated, they enjoy your existence, your companionship even. We don't even wanna look at your faces. We wish you would all just go away. That's our truth. I'm sure we'll be here long after you extinct yourselves. And my opinion is that will be through stupidity. But again, that's just an opinion. Even though there's plenty of historical fact to back it up. So the only thing I suppose I want from you is to listen to what I'm saying. And while I don't appreciate this opportunity, I will take the opportunity. And I guess it will help you to understand that throughout this endeavor, you're going to experience many species that hold disgust, that have resentment, that wish you ill, that would harm you if there weren't defenses in place for you right now. And when he says that, Puma puts pressure on my arm and stands up and stares him down. And he like snaps in the air towards Puma and then Puma flexes and then Princess like, I guess like hits a gavel to kind of break up the energy a little bit. And the alligator says, you do not scare me, feline. Nothing scares me. That's the point. I predate fear. It's why we invoke it in others. It's easy for me to say you do not belong here. But many who have such a long historical memory may think that way. There's a hierarchy. There's a timeline. To use your own words, there's proof in the pudding. There's a reason I have scales and you have soft skin. I'm hard and then it like, it's its chest. I'm rugged, I'm territorial. I wouldn't think twice about eating you if you came to my river. I'd take you out. That's what we do. And because I am who I am, you all take it upon yourselves to destroy us. That's ridiculous. It's insane, it's preposterous. You don't even belong there. It's not your home, it's where you travel to. What would you think if someone came into your home and picked you off 
because they didn't like you or they were scared of you. It makes no sense. You have all sorts of rules and regulations and people put in place for if that ever happened. I think you call it burglary and entering. What do we get? We get caught in nets and slaughtered. So yes, we think of you how we think of you because nothing you do makes any sense. But in the grand scheme of things, we're not too concerned. We were here before you. I'm sure we'll outlive you again. And then it gets like annoyed and it's like, ah, that's it. And it walks off. And then Princess kind of like shakes her head and takes a breath. And then kind of encourages everyone to take a breath. 